Welcome to part three in our three-part series of how to calculate return on real estate investment. What I'm gonna share with you today is gonna to make real estate the best investment you can invest in compared to anything else. Hey there, my name is Mike Fritz. I'm the founder of Titanium Capital Investments and the Multifamily CEO System. My greatest passion is helping investors just like you create financial freedom with multifamily real estate. And in this third part to our three-part series, I'm gonna walk you through what is an internal rate of return. It's the one piece of every equation that makes real estate the best investment you can ever make. And make sure you stick around to the end because I wanna give you a free gift that'll exponentially grow your portfolio in about half the time. Maybe you've heard the term IRR. IRR stands for internal rate of return and it takes into account everything that you make on a real estate deal. Now in cash on cash return, that calculates how much money you make while you own the property. But if you exit that property, you sell that property or you refinance, now we slide into the category of an internal rate of return, meaning how much we've made on the entire transaction of the deal, including what we made while we owned it and what we made when we sell it. Cash on cash return is your net return divided by how much cash you needed to put into the deal and you have your cash on cash return. That's a really important number to know when you're figuring out your internal rate of return. In fact, you have to know it. You have to know what percentage you have earned throughout the deal. So your net return, this is how much money you make while you own the deal. How much money you make after income minus expenses minus your debt payment. So you take your income minus out your expenses minus out your mortgage and interest payment and you have your net return. This is how much money we make after we pay all of our bills on a property. So we have our net return. Then you divide that by how much money you actually have into the deal. And when you divide that about how much money you have into the deal, you get your cash on cash return. And we also wanna remember that your net return, how much money you make every month is a variable that changes, which will increase your cash on cash return as long as that number goes up. If this number goes down, your cash on cash return goes down, but your cash needed is a constant, meaning your down payment, your appraisal, your inspection, your closing costs, everything it needed to get the deal was a one-time investment. Unless later on in the deal, you need to do a capital call and raise more money. This number is really a constant doesn't change. So you have a variable over here and a constant over here. And our goal is to keep this the same and keep this going up. And that will continue to increase our cash on cash return. You have to know your cash on cash return if you're gonna know your internal rate of return. Now your internal rate of return is a little more tricky and that's why I wanted to shoot this to really help you understand this. Because the more you understand this, the more you can talk to your investors and the more you can know as an investor so you understand how am I really making money in my deal. Because an investor might see their cash on cash return and it's only 6% year one. And they might look at that and say, listen, 6% is not really that big of a return. I'm not making that much on my money. I might go someplace else. But internal rate of return is what can pull them back into the discussion and really make them see real estate as the best and only option to invest in. So understanding this really separates you with your investors and helps you speak educatedly about how they're really going to make money back on the money that they've given to you. So let's dive into what internal rate of return actually is. So the first thing you need to do is take your cash on cash return. This is how much money you've made while you owned the property. Add that to the amount of years you owned the property. So if you made 5,000 year one, and then you made 6,000 year two and 7,000 year three, you're gonna add all of those years up. So you have three years and here's what I've made while I owned the deal. And that's what we call a TRA total return. How much money you owned while you had the property. So you take your cash on cash return and then you add up all the years you've owned the property on how much money you made in those years and then you have this total return number. So year one, you make 6,000. Then year two, you make 7,000, that's 13,000. Year three, you make 8,000. Now we have 21,000. So we've made $21,000 and we bring that down to a total return. I'm gonna walk you through an example in just a moment and help you see how this really plays out. So now you have your TR or your total return. Then you add that to your capital gains. Now your capital gains is once you sell the property, how much money did you make from the sale of that property. So you take how much money you made while you owned the deal, you add that to how much money you made when you sold the deal, and then you divide that by years owned, and then you have your IRR, or your internal rate of return. Internal rate of return, I wanna make sure you understand how this plays out in relationship to cash on cash, because here's the thing. 
If investors are only looking at this number, they're gonna not be very impressed with real estate. You want them to see the whole picture because when they see the whole picture, it's gonna turn their five or six or 7% when they start with the deal to 18, 20, 30% sometimes on a deal. And that's where we wanna help them see. They're not gonna make that anywhere else, especially in the stock market, but if they're going only on what they're gonna make cash on cash year one, maybe two and three, then it's really not gonna be that much money. But when you sell the property and exit, you're gonna see giant returns for your investors and they're gonna be ecstatic. Now, as a side note, that is only true if you buy in areas that have markets that are going northeast. You have to make sure you're investing in markets that can appreciate so when you sell them, you can sell them for more than you buy them for and really see a strong internal rate of return. If you want more content on how to continue to invest in deals, raise money, find properties, choose markets, make sure you subscribe to our channel and join our family of investors that are creating financial freedom through multifamily real estate. Also, crush that bell notification so you get notified every time we do a video and you can be with us as we continue to expand our reach of people that are really making a difference. Now I wanna walk you through an example of a recent property we just exited and sold and what kind of returns people experienced. So the first thing, our investors made on average they made about $4,000 per year. Made about $4,000 per year. Now that's only three to $400 a month range. Not a lot of money, but our investors in this deal put about 50,000 into the deal. It was a smaller deal and the deal we bought for 780K. So we bought for 780K. Most investors threw about 50,000 into the deal and they were making 4,000 per year. And if you're doing your math correctly, that's about an 8% return. While that might be a strong return in real estate to start, not a huge, huge return. So we owned the property for three years. They made $4,000 and we decided not to pay more money year after year after year and just put that money back into the property. So we continued to give our investors about $4,000 each year that we owned the property. So our investors ended up making about $12,000 the entire time we owned the property. So again, $4,000 is what they made on their cash on cash. Plus, remember I said we owned it three years, which is $12,000. So now we have a $12,000 return. So our total return here is 12K. That's our TR. That's our total return. So then we take our $12,000 down here and we plus the capital gains. When we sold the property, each investor made about $21,000 on the sale of that property for their perspective percentage of ownership. So each investor made about 21K on the deal. So they made 12,000 while we owned it. That's the total return. Then as we sold it, their capital gains was 21,000. And then we owned it three years. So we take 12,000 times 21,000. So we have 33,000 divided by three. So we have $11,000 they made on average per year, right? So we take $33,000 divided by three is $11,000. Now, what do we do with that 11 grand? So here's what we do. We take 11 and we divide it by what? How much money they have into the deal. So if they made 11,000 a year, they put 50K into the deal. Each one of our investors experienced a 20, 2% IRR, internal rate of return. So each of our investors got 22% per year on their money. Beat that stock market. So here's the idea, is the idea is that a lot of people are like, I don't really wanna start off making six or seven or 8%, but that jumps after we sell it to 22%. It almost triples in the amount of return they get. So if you're only looking at cash on cash return, Man, that's an anemic way to look at a real estate deal because your IRR is the divine number. This is the number that changes everything because it's gonna make every investor wanna be in your deal and it's gonna really tell you which deals you should go forward with and which ones you should avoid. I also wanna give you a free gift today. I put together a free 60 minute multifamily masterclass that helps people just like you get into multifamily real estate in 71 days or less, even if they don't have any money. So what you wanna do is in the description, click the link free multifamilymasterclass.com. You're gonna be taken to a 60 minute training that'll really help you spike your real estate portfolio and start putting some of this stuff into practice.